I am Professor uh, Bijan Madurai. I'm the Professor of Vascular Surgery at King's College London and Guy's and St. Thomas's NHS Foundation Trust. And I'm speaking today at the London Aortic Symposium 2018. My talk uh, today um, outlined the biological consequences of chronic low dose exposure uh, for operators in particular. I think um, uh, in 2018 we've realized that even though we sustain quite low doses of radiation, these are repeated exposures and we have found evidence in operators of DNA damage in their circulating cells. My talk also featured uh, uh, protective measures that uh, we can take as operators for example, making sure that we are as far back from the radiation as possible and having optimal lead shielding on our body that, that may mitigate some of these ill effects that we have uh, found as part of our research. I also outlined uh, the fact that uh, in the future we may use a combination of both biological and physical dissymmetry in order to understand more the amount of exposure that we receive and the consequences that this exposure might have. Our recent research has uh, focused on finding out whether there's an acute uh, biological response in operators that are exposed to low-dose radiation during X-ray guided um, uh, procedures, endovascular procedures. And what we did was isolate blood from operators immediately after the procedure and analyze for markers of DNA damage in their cells. And sure enough, we found that these markers for DNA damage and the repair process were uh, raised. And if we sampled these operators again, the following day after the operation, there were no markers to be detected, detected suggesting that there is uh, an acute uh, response. What we don't know is whether this repeated DNA damage repair cycle that occurs in the operator's irradiated cells uh, leads to any genomic instability and an increased instance of cancer. What we do know, however, is that um, in other uh, work, when they have isolated uh, cells in a similar way from operators that have been working for decades and analyzed for uh, chromosomal aberrations such as micronuclei and dicentrics which are markers of genomic instability sure enough in those that have been irradiated the longest there is an increased frequency of these markers suggesting that though unproven there may be a risk associated one of our key findings was that if you used leg shielding uh, i.e use protective lead cover for your lower half, it completely abrogated the DNA damage response. And I think that there is more work to be done in optimally protecting ourselves as operators. During the um, London Aortic Symposium today, we did um, a survey asking uh, the delegates how many of them used leg, uh, lead shielding. And uh, I was very, very surprised to find that there were only four. The vast majority said that they would rush out and buy leg lead, but only four were currently using it. And considering what our data shows and the fact that it's key in stopping the DNA damage response, I think there's more work to be done in making sure that individuals have all the protective items of clothing uh, available to them in, in the hospitals that they work in. As part of uh, the discussion after the session at the London Aortic Symposium, one of the uh, questions that was asked is whether we are doing enough to protect our trainees. And I think the answer is that there is room for improvement. Um, the permanent members of staff at each institution have the opportunity to uh, uh, ask for the protective items of clothing and the protective equipment in theatre to be uh, instigated and used. Our trainees move from hospital to hospital each year and may not have uh, those protection, that, that type of protection available to them um, as they move around. And I think the onus is on us, the deaneries and the trusts 
to make sure that we are fully protecting our trainees and the same protective measures and protective items of clothing that are available to permanent consultant staff are also available to our trainees.